Okay, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Wassalatu Wassalam, Rasulullah, Wa Alihi, Wa Sahbihi, Jain. Summa Ma Ba'd, A'udhu Billahi, Minash Shaitani Rajeem, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim. So we start uh, a new topic um, now, and this will be, uh, inshallah, you know, I'm looking forward to this, and it's really going to be beneficial for us. So this new topic is, as you can see from the title, to know him is to love him, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is about the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and it is, uh, a seerah, a seerah, we'll talk about this, what is a seerah? A seerah of our beloved messenger, uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, about his life. And this is going to be quite comprehensive, so it, it will take our time, and um, you know, we, might, we may take a while to go through, um, but we'll, um, it's going to benefit us, uh, inshallah, as well. So um, this is what the plan is. So initially, it, the, the way we will do, we'll work these sessions is that we'll... Um, First, you know, we'll have an introduction, and this is just introducing the topic, and this might take um, one or two sessions at least to do this, and we'll talk a bit about um, then, you know, about what, um, about pre-Islamic Arabia, meaning um, what was the situation in, in Arabia at the time before the Prophet ﷺ was born, what was happening in Arabia, you know, and what was, what was the landscape like, what was the religion, what was the social elements what were the politics of the place you know just to get an understanding of the background so we'll do that afterwards and then we move into you know the birth of the prophet وسلم, and the events which were taking place as well around the area so this is what we'll do so firstly the introduction so um, i hope everyone is um, looking forward to um, the sessions and uh, jazakallah again for joining and what we'll do today the plan is that we also plan if we can get get to get through um, some of the material um, in the introduction, we'll have a Kahoot quiz today at the end. You know, so the last like five, ten minutes, we'll do a quiz as well. Um, and we'll give you, um, we'll, um, we'll do speak about how you can log in. So it's very simple. You know, you can log in and you can, we'll give you a pin and then you can answer some questions. So we'll do a quiz as well. So we'll try and do that every session. We'll try and have like a, um, um, we'll have like um, the content, we'll go through the content in the last five, ten minutes. We'll uh, every session we'll try and do a quiz as well. So inshallah, you know, so we can really um, we can remember what we've learned. And this way, I hope that we all can stay engaged and we can all um, really focus as well in the class because you can be asked questions about what we're doing, right? So this is a good way, I think. Okay. So inshallah, we begin. Bismillah. Okay. So firstly, the introduction. Okay. To know him is to love him. Uh, Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So introduction. The first thing we'll talk about is. The introduction what is sira what is sira okay so this is the first thing before we start you know we're starting this topic and you may have done this before as well you may have um done classes before you may have sat in classes where you studied um or you know uh, the sira etc um, um so we'll talk about what is it the sira sira what does it mean so if we talk about this initially okay so we, um, I know um, in this topic, um, I hope uh, this is like a life-changing topic because you'll see why. And it is about, as we're starting, it is about one of the greatest human beings to ever walk on the face of the earth. So just bear this in mind, you know, um, that this is about the greatest human being ever to walk on the face of the earth. And this is why it's so important for us, us and so interesting. So firstly, okay, what, what, is, this, what is a seerah? What does it mean? So when we say seerah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we're, we're going to be studying the seerah. What are we talking about? So in the Arabic language, we'll just give the meaning, like linguistically, what does the word seerah mean? The word seerah, it literally means a path. It means a path. You know a path where somebody walks? A path that you walk on? A direction that you take? It's a path. That's what seerah means. So it's a path that somebody has gone in. You know, how they live their life, in what direction. That's what it means. But the word seerah, is also used for something else as well. So sira, the literal meaning is, is a path. That's what sira means. L literally, it means a path, a direction that somebody walked in. So obviously, you know, it's the path, that, the direction of the Prophet وسلم, which we study. But also, it means something else as well. It, it's, it has a deeper meaning, and this is extending it. So, you know, in the Quran, in Surah uh, Taha, in Surah Taha, when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, he, um, you know, the story of Musa alayhi salam, when um, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala when he called him, when Musa alayhi salam, he went to the valley, you know, the valley of uh, Tuwa, when he's coming back from um, Madi and he's going to Egypt. And there he was holding a stick, he's holding a staff. And do you remember when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave him his miracles? So he gave his miracles that you have to take this to Fir'aun, you have to take these miracles to Fir'aun. 
He said to him, what's in your right hand? You know, when you show him the miracles, he said to Musa, Islam, Allah SWT said to him, what's in your right hand? So Allah SWT obviously knew it was a stick that Musa Islam was holding him. So, because uh, Allah just wanted to have a conversation to make him feel comfortable. So Musa Islam, he described his stick, you know, this is my stick and I use this to do various things. So Allah he ordered him to throw the stick. And what happened when he threw the stick on the floor? Does anybody know what happens? He, so uh, when Musa al-Islam, he threw his stick, it became... Snakes. Yep, it became a snake, yes. The stick became a snake. And do you know what Allah Taala says in Surah, uh, Surah Taha? He says, you know, to Musa al-Islam, he said, don't be afraid, very quickly, you know, grab, grab the snake, grab it. Don't be afraid, very quickly, we will return it to its sirataha. It's sira, sirataha ula. So that basically means al ula is the original. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says we will turn it to its original what? Sira here means we will return this snake to its original form, its original shape, its original condition. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is using the word sira to describe the snake being turned back to a stick. So he's using the word sira here for a description. You know, describing like describing this um, the form of it, the shape of it, the condition. So Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. He uses the word sira in this way. So what we're trying to say is sira, it literally, it means, so as well as meaning path, the other meaning is, in the more detailed, it's the condition. It's the way you live your life. It's even like your physical, you know, how you look like, that, that's included in sira. It's a part of your, it's a part of the hard drive. You know, the DNA of a person? Sira literally is everything. It includes everything. It's, it includes everything about the, um, the way the person looks like, the way a person, you know, all aspects of the life, that is sira. So it's it's like a broader term as well. So in terms of the messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the sira is actually every single thing. It's everything that came that comes to us, which has been related to us, which we know from the life of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's very, very broad. So, you know, this is um, quite important to understand that the sira, you know, when we say we're going to study the sira of the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is to do with everything. So it's even, you know, um, directly whatsoever connected to his life and what other things were going on around him as well. So it literally it's like a massive study, the study of his life and what was happening around him as well. So Sira is, um, it's, yeah, so it's also, like we said, the, the form, it's the shape, it's the condition as well. So it's it's everything in that sense. So, you know, when we look at the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, like we said, it's also, um, like previous scholars have said, that they actually said that every single day of the life of the Prophet Sallallahu that is part of the seerah as well. Every single day of his life, because that's that's what seerah covers. It covers, it covers, you know, some um, everything in detail. Um, yes, so that's right. The, the genes you could say of the person. So also, so with so in regards to Prophet Sallallahu it's the direction he took in his life. It's all of his characteristics. It's his physical descriptions, how he looked like, and we will cover that as well. How did he look like? His character, his manners all of his campaigns, his trips he went to, his military expeditions, his trips, his family life, his home, um, everything that was happening at the time of the Prophet wasallam, that is his seerah. That's the seerah. So you can understand, you know, how comprehensive this is. Okay, good. So that's what we understand. So now we've talked about this. So if you go back to, okay, we go to our slide. What is seerah? Okay. The second thing is, why study the seerah? Why study the sunnah? So, this is now um, we'll talk about some points here, and we may get through some of them today. But we'll go through what is the point of us actually studying the the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam? What's the point of doing this? And we'll talk about some very very important points for us. Okay. So if you inshallah, yeah, if you could pay attention as you're doing, and um, really um, we'll see. So at least there's at least um, I'd say okay seven reasons maybe more. What's the first point? The first point is. Why study the seerah? Okay. To know him is to love him. So this is like the title. This is the title of our series, isn't it? The title is to know him is to love him. And that's very, very important. That's the first reason why we study the seerah. So what does that mean? To know him is to love him. So, you know, nowadays, what happens nowadays? There may be figures in, um, in society. There may be people, could be in sports, could be football. It could be film actors. It could be musicians. Uh, it could be, you know, even virtual figures online. Like you have your... Um, what do you call those things online? Obi or what do you call it? Oh, yeah, those things. You know your characters online. It could be anything. You know nowadays through gaming, you have 
avatars, yeah, these things. It could be anything. It could even be our friends. It could be our family. You know, it could be anything that we want to follow, basically. You know, we really like this thing. We want to follow it. Um, it's something that it becomes our role model because we really, we spend time like following it, doing it. You know, we're busy. Uh, we become busy doing these things. So we also, you know, and about these celebrities and these people or somebody that you think is a role model, you want to know everything about their life. So you go into their uh, Twitter account, into Facebook, social media. You say, okay, what are they doing? What are they having for breakfast? What, when, are, what, when are they sleeping? What are they buying? Um, what, where are they going? You know, you want to know everything about them because they become, you want to know everything about them because they are someone like they become your role model, right? So you want to know everything about them, their daily life. Because of this, what happens? You naturally develop a love for them. You develop a love, and this this happens even with human beings. You know, our family, our, our, our people around us. You always want to know what are they doing. Um, you want to know, you know, where are they going, what are they eating, and because of this, because you know everything about them, their life, you begin to love them, and that's how love develops. Because you, the first thing you get to know the person. So when it comes to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, we know that we need to love him more than ourselves. We know this, right? We need to obey him second only to Allah subhanahu wa taala. So firstly, we obey Allah. Number one. Secondly, we obey the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and then thirdly, we know it's our parents. We, um, in terms of our, you know, um, our kindness and our compassion and um, the the order of ranking. So, firstly, so that means the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We need to love him more than ourselves. So, what does that mean? But how do we do this? We don't even know him. That's the question. So, if we don't even know who he is, we don't know about his life. How can we love him? So, just think about it. Like. If he doesn't have a priority in my life, like we don't know who he was, how he lived, what he did for us, how are we going to love him? So that is the that's the very very important um, point that we need to to know him is to love him. So once you get to know him, inshallah, you know you are going to um, love him, and then you will be able to then um, really um, benefit yourselves in your life. So you know if you learn about some someone, it leads to familiarizing yourselves with them. So eventually you're going to develop a love for that person. So that's natural. So that's what we understand. So that's how the human heart works. So just bear in mind that, you know, when you um, get to know the Prophet ﷺ, his ups, his downs, for sure, we are going to develop a love for him. And that's guaranteed. And that's our main aim, main aim, our goal here. So you, you'll you see, you know, that um, the other points we go through are linked to this. So, okay, that's the first reason. Good. To develop, to know him is to love him. Secondly, what are the, what's the next reason why we should study this here? Taking practical and relevant lessons. Taking practical and relevant lessons so um what do we mean by that yeah. practical means that you can apply them to your life you can apply them to your life so now you may have had you know like we said before you may have had some exposure like you may have studied the seerah before in classes or from books um and in fact you know it could even have been very dry you know boring it could have been very boring it could have been a study names places uh dates just a collection just a collection of facts it could have been that uh and you know this place this um this place happened at this time with this person and this date and so and so this incident happened and it could have been like that but um you know uh, that's quite boring or it could have been presented in a way maybe it, you would have studied it in a story format like which is very important but the danger is if someone tells you in a story like it's a fairy tale this is what this is what happened in history you can think it's got no link, no point uh, link to my life. It happened so long ago. What, what's, what, how does it relate to my life, the Sira? I mean, it, it's happened so long ago. What's the relevance in my life? So it could have been that as well, you know. So the, the, the thing is, to take a practical lesson, you can, so you could, you know, you, it may have been the case that it happened a long time ago in a faraway place. You know, what can I do with that? It's like entertainment, you know. It was, I had a good lesson for 30 minutes, but how can I apply this to my life? It doesn't make it so far long ago, you know? So it's either pure facts or it's entertainment. But now we do need these two things as well. We do need to have facts and entertainment, but there's a third most important critical thing that we need to have, and what's that? We need the life of the Prophet وسلم, to be practical and relevant to us. In other words, we need to make it, apply it, learn from his life and apply it every day. And you can only do this, you know, if you observe, now, if you see the Prophet وسلم, how did he act with individuals, with non-Muslims, with Muslims, with youth, with women? You know, for how did he act with different people um, in society? So, for example, you know, nowadays, um, the young people. If you look at young people, young people have lots of questions nowadays. You know, and they have these issues as well. Um, potentially, you know, with aspects that they say they could have issues as well with Islam, for example. You know, they may not 
accept or understand everything about Islam. And it's not only a problem, you know, it could be a problem in the Western world, it could be a problem in the UK, it could be prob a problem, you know, all even in Muslim countries, you have these young people, they think we don't, we can't connect with Islam, for example, you know, um, there's a problem which exists, um, you know, the young people are detached, they're far away from the Quran, from Islam, from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, you know, for, to give you an example, in, uh, in Ramadan, so um, in Ramadan, we um, we went to a youth, a youth center, so where we used to um, carry out our, our prayers at some, at times, and they they do an amazing job, basically bringing young people. They bring young people from the streets, and they bring them um, into um, the, an environment of like activities and into um, you know a masjid and prayer into Islam. And some of the stories that you hear from is really scary, you know, for you your children as well, especially because there was a young brother. He said that he was about to commit suicide basically he's about to kill himself he was about to jump off a bridge because he was just how his life was but then he um he confided he spoke to muslims at the youth center who connected him with um you know who spoke his language and they and slowly slowly this brother he became friends and um, with these people and it really helped him and he was saying you know when we were listening he's saying a lot of my friends have been stabbed um you know um because there's a lot of um gangs which violence which goes on and you know a lot of our sisters as well they commit sin and you know these things happen in other words may Allah to protect our children but the point is the youth face a lot of issues nowadays and it's very very important but the thing is you know if we study the seerah the life of the prophet وسلم, we get to see how the prophet وسلم, how he interacted with the young people how he how he interacted with the young people of society so he was 40 years old when he became a prophet. So he wasn't like you'd say a young man, but he was 40 years old, but yet he's still teaching. In fact, something very interesting they'll talk about um, when we get there, that many of the people that followed the Prophet وسلم, very early on, they were youth, the early Sahaba, they were young people, and they were mostly young people, and he gave them the time of day. You know, like this person who was at the youth center, he was saying, I was about to commit suicide and I was in gangs because no one used to listen to me, no one understood me. But guess what? The Prophet وسلم, the, young, the first people who came to Islam were young people because the Prophet وسلم, he did respect the young people. He spoke to them in their language. He gave them then the time of day and he gave them responsibility. You know, we can learn how did the Prophet وسلم, he interact with the youth. So we can learn so much from this. So that's very important. And just another example is, you know, to see the Prophet وسلم, how did he maintain his family? You know, his family, he was, he was maintaining a family but he was the most busiest person ever well, on the face of the earth because he was the messenger of Allah. But he was still maintaining a family, which is a big responsibility. So he was so busy, but he took care of his family, you know, um, and the, through the testimony of the people, through people who witnessed him at the time, he was the best one in taking care of his family. So he was the best husband, the best father, the best cousin, the best nephew, the best everything you can imagine, the best grandfather. So how did he manage all of this? So inshallah, you know, we will get to observe this. So, you know, you see, um, you see how we can take practical um, lessons and benefits from his life. So we can learn from the Prophet وسلم, We can learn, you know, he was an amazing teacher as well. For example, we are all teachers. Yeah, at some level, we are all teachers. How did he deal with his students? Who are all different? Each student is different, right? But how did he deal with all his students? How did he deal with all, you know, like our students, our children, different people? How did he deal with this? That's another thing we're going to see. And when we talk about practical lessons, it's also um, from the life of the Prophet وسلم, it's also what occupied his mind, what occupied his mind the most, for example. What lessons can I take from this? So, you know, he was always very concerned. He was always uh, grieving, like he was about the condition of the people. He was always worried all the time about deep in thought and thinking about other people all the time. And this is something for us we have to do as well, because we have to have concern for people around us, you know. So we want to, we need to want Jannah for the people around us as well. That's very important. Okay. So like we're saying, all the answers about all the interactions with different people around us in our families and society, the answers lie in the seerah, the life of the Prophet It's very, very important. So inshallah, you know, we will try to make it practical and relevant. And we will try when we go through this um, to make it um, relevant to our lives and not make it boring and not make it dry. So we make it so you all, you know, keep you engaged and interested. So, inshallah, that's the, the next point. Okay, good. That's another point is take practical and relevant lessons. Okay. 
Thirdly, this is very, very important. Why? Why should we study the seerah? Why should we study the seerah? Third point is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he instructs us to in detail. He instructs us to in detail. So this is very, very interesting and very important as well. That, you know, whilst we are talking about why we should study the seerah, we should go to the Quran, go to the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we go to the Quran, if we go to, um, um, you know, the word of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Surah 33, Surah Al-Ahzab, Ayah 21. If we go here, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he instructs us, right, right away, right off the bat, you could say, straight away, he says, he mentioned the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He turns our attention to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he tells us to go and study the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in detail. How? Because he tells us, there is no doubt about it, you know, that consistently, consistently for you, without any exception, for all times and places, in the Messenger of Allah, you have the most excellent role model. You have the most excellent role model for, for anyone who has hope in Allah and the last day. For anybody who remembers Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. So you have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, so you can check this out, Surah 36, Al-Ahzab, Ayah 21. He says, surely you have about, most definitely, there's no doubt about it, that consistently, without any exception, for all times and places, in the Messenger of Allah, it's very important, there is the best role model. So he, he tells us. So based on, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. He's saying for you, no doubt about it, for you actually, the best for you, without any exception, the Prophet وسلم, is your best role model, he tells us. So if we look at this, actually, this is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. And if just look at one word here, I just want to mention one word here, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. He's, he's made this ayah. So, you know, if you look at it linguistically, grammatically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying there's no doubt, make no mistake, no doubt the fact that in the Messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so he uses the word fi. So I just want to talk about one point here, fi. So inshallah, you know, keep, um, I hope you're all still listening. He says, in the Messenger of Allah. So he uses the word fi. So why, the question is, why does he say fi? Like, why does he say fi in the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? You have the best example. You have the best role model. Why does he say fi? Why doesn't he say like, um, um, you know, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is your best um, role model? Why does he say in the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? In the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best role model. Why does he say that? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَقَدَ لَكُمْ فِي رَسُولِ اللَّهِ in the Messenger of Allah, you have the best, you have Uswatun Hasana. You have the best role example. So what why do, why does he say the question is why does he say fi in? It's very, very um the Surah Al Ahzab. So you know Allah subhanahu wa says that in the Messenger of Allah, for you, for all times, is the ultimate, the most excellent role model. And that's and that is the only role model for you, really. Um, the excellent role, the best role model for you. There's no one better than the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So, so, any ideas? So, why does he say "fi Rasulillahi" in the Messenger of Allah? How does um, how does that make it? How does that change the way we should approach the Sira, basically? Because it is um, when we are starting. Um, so, because it's encompassing everything of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his words, his actions, his matters, everything. Okay, Jazakallah again for that, yes. So, fi means in. So, in means you're diving into something, isn't it? In, in means you're going deeply into something. So, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala is telling us that in the Messenger of Allah, you have the most excellent role model. And this is basically because, you know, he's only an amazing, and this is a very important point I want you to take away. And inshallah, this will be our last point, and then we'll do our quiz afterwards. That he is only an amazing role model for you and me if we completely immerse, if we completely dive in, fee, if we completely if we completely go into the life of the Prophet. ﷺ. If we study the messenger, the life of the Prophet ﷺ, in detail, only then we will be affected by his life. There's no other way. So that's why it's so amazing, isn't it? The, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions. In the Messenger of Allah is the most amazing role model, is the best example. So Mayas Pantala give you an idea of ability. So we need to immerse ourselves into the life. We need to go into the life of the Prophet وسلم, meaning we, in these sessions, you know, going forward, put yourself in the shoes. When we start um, going through in detail, put yourself in the shoes of the Prophet وسلم, 
Imagine living the life as he lived day in, day out, event by event, occurrence by occurrence. You imagine living that life thinking at that time, you know, this is what the Prophet ﷺ was experiencing. You have to walk that life. You have to try and be in his shoes. Try to imagine what it was like. And then and only then you're going to realize how much of an amazing role model the Prophet ﷺ was for you. And like the title of our series, once you really get to know him, you know, you'll surely love him. Uh, and, you know, the happiness, the pain he went through, the journey, this journey that we will go through as well, because we will immerse ourselves, we will be in the shoes of the Prophet ﷺ, inshallah. Okay, so, um, okay, so what else can we say? The reason, so like we said, um, uh, the, the, um, the, 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 the we, we have been talking about, you know, um, to truly understand, we need to truly understand the life of the Prophet ﷺ, the experiences he went through, to realize how we can benefit so we will do that inshallah you know, going forward we'll really immerse and dive in to the life of the prophet وسلم, and that's why we will be studying in depth inshallah okay okay and once you begin to know him and love him you won't have like any questions or objections you know you won't have confusions about him as well which may be the case because of media etc you may have some confusion so that that's good so inshallah okay what we'll do um these three points we've covered we will now we will do a Kahoot quiz. Okay, so um, so right now uh, we have um, okay. So inshallah, any quick questions we will take them. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika nashadu alla ilaha illa anta nastaqfiruka wa tubu alaik. Let us want Allah allow us to um, benefit from the life of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And um, today, like we said, we've just gone through a brief introduction about um, introducing the seerah for us and some of the reasons why we should study the seerah. So we'll continue on this next week.